Hello and welcome to the first edition of the BZ podcast, BZ cast, I don't know, we don't fully have a name for it yet, but for our first ever podcast, we decided to have on a man sat opposite me right now, who sits opposite me about four days a week to be fair, because he works here. It's BZ Tactical's first ever employee, it's Joe Sinski. Hi guys. So, Joe, you were the first ever BZ Tactical employee. BZ has been going over 21 years now. It was a paintball company, but about five, six years ago now? Six years ago I started. It was actually, it popped up on my uh, timeline on Facebook. It was the 18th of uh, May. Eight, so no, sorry, April. April, sorry. 18th also, of April. Ju- just over six year anniversary of BZ Tactical um, being a thing. Yeah. So, do you want to tell us how you got into Airsoft in the first place, Joe? So... I got into Airsoft, um, as I think, I don't know how many people did in this way, but um, I was down at a friend's house in Huddersfield, um, and we were all, you know, just a group of lads going, oh, what, what are we going to do this weekend? Oh, let's go do paintball, which I think a lot of lads do at that age. But now, as I know from working here, paintball sites take a lot of time to get ready. You can't just walk up and play. But with Airsoft, you can just turn up on the day and do a rental. So that's yep. what we did. We found a local Airsoft site. We went and rented, and that was it. We were hooked, and what? that was... 12, maybe even 13 years ago now. It's been quite a while. Yes, back in your, <laughs> well, your younger days. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> so how did that become, go from a little day out with your mates to being your full-time job of six years? So originally I was um, kitchen, and, kitchen and bathroom fitting um, for a long period of time, but my knees and back are just knackered. So when they put the job post, I was like, you know, I'll apply for that, we'll have a go of it. Came and did the interview and it just kind of worked. It was just the timing of my health kind of really going down from that point of view. And yeah, it just kind of all worked in well together for the timing of them needing an employee. So over the last six years at BZ, you've kind of morphed into a bit of an airsoft to paintballer, like a bit of a hybrid. Um, Can you talk about what it's like playing at both airsoft and paintball? And do you think paintballers should be playing airsoft and vice versa? I think everyone should be playing both. The main reason being is I love playing airsoft. I'll I'll always play airsoft, it's my go-to. There's nothing as fun as shooting a paintball marker. Like just the feeling and watching the paint go and splatting people, it's absolutely fantastic. So I I, I, I don't understand people that go, oh, well, you know, one's, you know, really bad in this way, or really bad in that way. They both have pros and cons, but both are equally as fun. yeah. Just play both. It does kind of get to me a bit when we get like a bit tribalism comments of people being like slagging the other sport off in a way. And it's it's like, well, we're both just shooting things at each other for fun. Like, yeah, literally. Just, it, let people enjoy what they want to enjoy and like give it a go. Like if you haven't tried one or the other, give it a go because you might end up really loving it. Like they're different and there's differences between them. But at the end of the day, it's shooting your mates with projectiles and it's yeah, in a safe it. way it, it, it doesn't matter which way you want to do it but but as i say both are equally as fun yeah um we, we must yeah. get asked this you know on tiktok especially about three times a week but and there's an obvious answer if you know but what hurts more airsoft or paintball it's paintball yeah it, of course it is paintballs are bigger they're traveling at near enough the same speed they're traveling at 300 feet per second but they're like three grams like yeah they quite often expose an impact but if you get hard paint it doesn't Burst and impact. It's like up to 14 joules of energy. Like he's an airsoft will understand. Oh, that's a lot. That'll hurt. Like it, it's a lot. As I've been told many times in my life, size matters. So when you're getting hit by something like that, <laughs> yeah. compared to something like something that, like that. <laughs> it's going to make a difference. So, but yeah, I, I definitely think people need to mix and match a bit more often because yeah, definitely. What's the point? Like of not, it, you can't judge something unless you've tried it. Um, so. As an airsofter of many, many years, a veteran of the UK scene, shall we say, you've racked up a bit of a collection in over time. Yeah. It, you might not have an exact number, but if you had to guesstimate oh, no, I didn't how many... We were working this out the other day in the shop, actually, me and the oh, lads. he's it, pulling out a spreadsheet. It, it's actually not okay. Um, so what, what is your collection up to now? Including Man, two that are about to come in that I'm going to buy. Um, 18 guns. 18? 18. <sighs> that's like... It's a silly number. That's probably worth more than <laughs> most people's first cars. It's worth a lot more than my first car. Yeah. Because there's some exotic stuff in there as well. And yeah, it's just... So I mean, the... when you spread it all over 12 years, it's not so bad. I started at the end of 2019. 
And the, uh, the guys who own BZ actually own about five or six different businesses. And I work for all of them. BZ Tactical was at the bottom of the rungs. It was like the least important thing. I had the less go. It was like once a week we maybe go, oh yeah, we've got this new rifle in or we've got this thing. Can you just go get a photo of it and tell people about it? And that was kind of it. It was like, oh, send an email once a month just to let people know what we've got. But now it's it's done a complete 180 and it's now at the top of the thing. Everything, every day there's just so much going on. It's like constant, the amount of things, especially even with BZ Fest, one day event, the amount of things we've got going on with that one day, the amount of people we've got visiting, the amount of giveaway prize we're doing, we're doing about, worked it out today, we've got about eight grand so far worth of prizes to give away at people. And there's still going to be more on the way as well. That's yeah, exactly. That's keep increasing. And it's mostly airsoft stuff. And it's just to see how it's gone from this small th section in a shop, basically. It's like one little tiny department in the shop to be in 70, 80% of the shop now. And it's like, um, it, it's just, Crazy, like obviously we've got the 20 years in paintball to fall back on. We've got a 23,000 square foot uh, warehouse because of that. We've got the distribution networks. That's how we've managed to grow in the last few years so highly. And we've actually just put more time and effort into it. And we've got more, air you were the only Airsoft member of staff for about three years maybe, four, four so, years. Yeah, it was quite a while. And yeah, then now it's just like, year, yeah. we've had, we're adding more and more people the last few years. It just been a it's just been a massive turnaround and both sports are doing well but especially since covid airsoft has just shot through the roof from what i've seen i think with airsoft it's a lot more accessible so like certainly because of social media and yeah. things like that because of what you do and because of tiktok everyone's seen all these videos and they're going oh, that's cool what's that i'll oh, watch it on youtube because so many people are out there recording the gameplay and putting it on it's like oh well, you know, this is airsoft. Oh, well, there's one five minutes down the road for me because there's so many airsoft sites. Well, hold on, there's an airsoft shop around the corner for me. You can go look at it, pick it up, feel it, go play it because there's so much rental equipment available. And it's just so accessible. Yeah. That everyone can get into it. Right, we'll play a little bit of Desert Island Riffs here. So, okay. of your ex extensive collection of airsoft goodies, mm. if you could only save one, which one would it be? Look at this again, because I forget after half the Getting time. the spreadsheet out again. Getting the spreadsheet out again. Um, there's two, really, that would be very hard to choose between. I've got an old AG PTS Masada that I recently picked up second hand. And then there's also um, an Archwick gas blowback that, he, um, that I had brought over. Um, an LMT, a Lewis machine tool gun. I had that brought over spe like especially. Um, I brought it back in a case from Taiwan. It was a, quite an interesting trip to get back. Um, yeah, out of those two, it's really difficult because I know that the, the Archwick LMT, there's, there's one in the UK and I have it. I'm really fortunate with that. But with the PDS Masara, they're not made anymore and they're a really nice classic gun. Hmm. Like certainly, I mean, I remember growing up playing like Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, the original one. And like the ACR, and that was like, oh, this is like one of the best guns in the game. It's, that, it's the ACR, like what, who doesn't want that? It's so cool. That's why we've seen the uh, M93R become so popular recently. Yeah, that's it, it's that Modern Warfare just, 2 vibes. I'm waiting for people to bring out model like what, 1870s, whatever it is, the shotguns where you rack them back and someone will go around with them next. <laughs> right, well, we got a few questions from our, do we say fans, are they fans? Play a bit, yeah. Do we have fans? I don't I'm, know. I'm sure we have fans. We have fans. Of course <laughs> we do. Um, so we'll go to some of these questions. Right, Sean Copplestone asks, what red dots do you use? And I guess optics in general, what what optics are you using at the moment? So to be honest with you, I do mainly stick to Vortex. Um, I have a lot of the, cr I have about three or four of their little um, 180 pound crossfire. It's just such a great little optic. And you've got the warranty there. You know, if, even if you fall over and you smash it by falling over, you know, it's, it's not miscellaneous damage, it's accidental damage, so it's fixed for free for life. I, I don't see, I mean, obviously, you know, budget's always a thing, and I completely understand, you know, that, you know, spending £180 on an optic, it, it's a lot of money. But I think through finance, you know, clan and all that these days, that it's, it's such an investment to have. So we're actually giving away a Vortex Crossfire Red Dot at BZ Fest worth 190 quid. So get yourself to BZ Fest, tickets are free, and you can win yourself a lovely uh, prize, like a Vortex Red Dot. 
Next question we've got Fred Airsoft asking, what was your first riff and what's your most recent riff? My first riff, this was such a stupid decision. Um, I can't remember who originally made it. It was a Tangfoglio or Tangfoglio Gold Custom. It was a race pistol. It was 16 round single stack mags on CO2. And it was fantastic for CQB. It was so much fun. But what a stupid, for, for a first gun, that was such a stupid thing to buy. There's probably people listening to this younger than that gun, to be fair. Yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> there will be, yeah. No, I'll, um, I'll send you a photograph and you can put it on the side yeah. on YouTube to show what it is. If, I think I've got a photograph of me holding it somewhere. And like it has, I put a red dot on it and a sight protector, you know, just standard point two blasters inside a CQB arena. I mean, mate, you said it was the best gun in there because like it was really accurate, but 16 round mags, not good. No, <laughs> not a good time. But so you've got two on the way, but what's the most recent one you've actually bought? Um, I think it's the PTS Masada that I picked up second hand. Yeah, some guy was selling it on a Discord server and I was like, I need that. That's that's old. That's a bit of me. It's cool. I'm having that. Fair enough. So Kraken NW asks, what makes a really good riff? And is there anything you want to see in the future of Airsoft? Um, I think just manufacturers putting a lot of R&D into them. So I think there's this whole kind of... What's the right word? I don't know the right word, but this whole kind of thing around um, manufacturers where they'll put, a lot of them will put polymer pistons in. And these days there's no real need for it because they say, you know, well, if anything else goes, it's cheap parts to replace. But with the quality of some stuff coming out now, it, the pistons aren't breaking. It's normally something else anyway. So you may as well put a metal one in. I think G&G &G fit a metal one to most of their guns. Um, yeah, same with VFC. I believe they fit full metal pistons. They don't have anything polymer. Um, but yeah, I think that changing everything now to full metal and higher quality inside of riffs is really good. Um, what makes a good quality riff, as I say, just down to that research and development that the, um, the manufacturers are doing and just, you know, lots of product testing first to make sure that, you know, it, when it does go out of the box that it's, it's absolutely solid. I was speaking to um, James, our tech, a few moments ago and he was watching um, a really in-depth review on the uh, Cryotac gas blowback vector. And the guy who was doing the review, and I say completely independent of what he was like, we've never actually had one at the test, but he was saying that if you're good at fixing guns, you can get one of these. But unless you're good at fixing a lot of problems out the box, nah, they're not worth it. So, mm. and that's brand new. Yeah. Well, this is the thing, like some, we recommend, there's certain guns that we recommend because we just know they're going to be reliable. And there's certain guns we recommend that are super fun to use, but you need to know how to take your gun apart if you want to oh, if you want to use yeah, them. Yeah. Um, and then if you go back to like R and D and testing and stuff like that, you know, we circling back to the uh, Artwick APC nine K, that was originally meant to come out like late last year, but yeah. they wanted to make it as perfect as possible. So this that's why it's still not released and it won't be released for another month or two. But and people ask us all the time, like, why is it why is it taking so long or why has it been pushed back again? And the answer is so you can get the best gun possible for your money yeah. and they're not just doing this for a laugh you know what i mean they they're testing and testing and testing and improving and improving and improving till they know that the thing that they're putting out is the best quality thing possible yeah absolutely and um yeah at the end of the day i think from a business point of view it is obviously frustrating to have something delayed so long but from a player point of view i mean i mean i imagine that all the players are frustrated as well they want this gun but uh, imagine if you got it, it didn't work that'd be a nightmare but if you get it, it works everyone's happy yeah Right, you mentioned G&G &G in that last question, and that moves on to something. Uh, Scott Handley wants to know, will we be getting any lever action snipers in at any point? We absolutely will. Um, I was speaking to New Pro literally like all, all a week ago tomorrow, actually. Um, and yeah, we're, we're getting loads in. Um, we're trying to bring some in as fast as possible. So that's the new uh, Levar 15 from G&G &G that yeah. everyone's lost their mind over since it's, they got unveiled. I mean, to be fair, it is really cool. So it uses um, AEG barrels, hop units, um, mags even, uh, to the point where, from what I understand, I'm not exactly sure how it works, but you can put an ARP9 up a receiver on it with you know all that, and they can use an ARP9 drum mag with it, which is silly. Yeah. But at the same time, like, you can what other gas lever action rifle can you do that with? Um, it gives upgrades a really good path, and I do believe also that they're going to be at 
the, the, there is a model that's going to be at sniper limits. So with the longer barrel and stuff, and you can actually use it as a sniper rifle, which you know is actually quite cool. Yeah, we're getting about fifty of them in, I think. I as, do believe so. As yeah. soon as we'll be one of the first stores in the UK to get them. Um, you were actually at IWA and they unveiled it. I think out of everyone, G and D probably had the strongest IWA for like new releases and getting people talking. For new products, yeah. I mean, it'd be fair that there was a few booths I didn't really go over and pay much attention to because we don't really get their products in. So I mean, um, LCT, for example, we didn't really look at. Um, and they seem to have some quite cool new stuff out, but yeah, didn't really have a look at them. But yeah, G&G &G in particular, they had some really cool stuff out. I mean, certainly when it comes to, um, there's the new um, combat machine that's coming out, the new CM16. That looks really good. That seems like it's, you know, been really, they've basically rebuilt the entire gun. And just, we haven't re re unveiled this yet, but G&G &G are kindly given one of those to give away at BZ Fest, yeah, so, so got, an unreleased, unreleased G&G gun yeah. will be given away. I'm going to have to put my name down for the release, I think, because yeah. it does look really good. Um, yeah, they had a line of p new pistols coming out and like all, all like the colour swapping parts available, which you know, I'll send you the photographs across so we can make sure we get those up there for you to see. And yeah, they, they brought out a lot of new products and they're, I think, working with other people now, so I think originally they were very much in-house. They're now doing what a lot of other people are doing, which I think is a great idea. They're putting gate products inside some of their guns yeah. as well, which is just... You know, we, we get you having such a good reputation, two-year warranty, things like that. It's, it's absolutely solid, especially with the amount of programming and stuff you can do with them. Yeah, and we've seen that with VFC as well. We're getting some of those gate VFC yeah, guns yeah, in very soon. Gate, yeah, and um, for those. if you're looking for a Levar um, G and G, &G let us know. And uh, we're, it's probably going to be one of the hottest pre-orders of the year, I think. Yeah, that's. I mean, we're also getting as well at the same time uh, the shotgun that came out with the E. What a bull called? puff shotgun. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've got 50. It'll, it will be slightly later on, but we've got another 50 of those coming in as well. And hopefully they'll sell out in a day as well. Yeah, probably, yeah. that's. It. I mean, they were ridiculously popular. <laughs> um, but obviously players are loving them and they do seem like a really cool thing. So Ben has asked, what is the best gun for woodland environments? Um, probably an LMG in all seriousness. I mean, if you're not... Doing a lot of CQB, you know, there's no minimum engagement distances. Just lay down a load of fire with an LMG. It's something we don't really stock at the moment, which really shouldn't. That's probably one of my like my fault, really. But um, yeah, just if it's just a lot of open ground, like just trees for cover, you're not going to go wrong with an LMG just spraying at people, are you? Right, and final question from Christ is King on TikTok. <laughs> he wants to know: Is a gas blowback worth it? It depends on what you want out of it. If out of airsoft, all you want to do is go have fun, shoot your mates, blast a load of rounds off, no, absolutely not. It is, it is not the gun for you. If you want to have that fun, immersive experience and you know have the bolt lock, have to do the mag changes, 30 round mags, absolutely. There's, there's yeah. nothing as fun as that full immersive experience, especially when, you know, obviously you get into it quite a lot, you do hone like your skills, your drills, and you do get good at shooting. Um, and you end up just doing really well with the gas blowback. That it's nothing as satisfying because it's, it's a completely different way to play airsoft. It's not running around, I've got loads of yeah. ammo. You've actually got to think about what you're doing. You've actually got to think, well, hold on. Like, if I go into this next room, have I got enough rounds in the mag? And like, it's not really easy to check with a gas mag. So yeah, you've actually got to really think about it. So yeah, it depends on which, what you want out of it. If you want to just run around and have a shoot, no, if you want the immersiveness, absolutely, there's nothing like it. Would you say that if people are looking to buy their first gun, they should avoid going for gas straight away? I wouldn't necessarily say avoiding gas straight away. It, AGs are a lot easier. It, it's as pure and simple as that. But bear in mind that you could have used AGs for 10 years. And when you pick up a gas gun, you know, yeah, you'd be better at playing airsoft, but the whole maintenance side of it, the whole way to play, you have to relearn that. So there's no right or wrong time to pick up a gas gun. You just got to know what you're getting into. You got to know that you're getting into. Okay, I've got to do a lot of maintenance on this. I've got to make sure that you know everything is done correctly. That you know that we, yeah. There's a lot more to do than just picking up battery play. Yeah. Right. I think that's a good place to leave it for now. Cool. So if you've made it all the way to the end, like thank you very much. Let us know in the comments if you did make it all the way to the end. But I think that was an all right first podcast. I had a couple of technical difficulties, and we did have someone walk in halfway through and uh, interrupt <laughs> us, and we had to stop. But other than that, it was fine. So if you want to see more of these guys, or if there is any other content you want from BZ, let us know in the comments, and we'll get filming. Thank you.